back to ranting with ricardo obviously y'all are here so if you're new please like comment and subscribe and if you're not new you know you could if you haven't subscribed yet please do that and you know what you need to like and comment come on we trying to grow together okay i'm trying to grow possibly in the future when i'm at a higher level than i am now i will help y'all grow okay but we're gonna get into this love and hip-hop family reunion um recap review thoughts feelings my own thoughts my own feelings because it's my channel i could do what i want anyway let's get into it for this first uh uh first event i want to say first event for this episode the event we see happening is planned by a little teeny tiny fizzle pop and it's basically like a field day and i was like i haven't had a field day since whew, i was in the seventh grade that's the last time i had a field day field days were great i'm gonna tell you that now you like you got out of class the whole day they was either I mean, the food wasn't great, but they was either like doing a little barbecue or whatever, but you got out of class, you got to just have fun all day. Field days are amazing. I know one field day I had in elementary, the school was closing down, so they brought the fire department and we were just having all types of fun. That was like back in the day when they used to put everybody's names on the shirts. Y'all remember, like, used to be names. Oh, this should be an episode of Nostalgia Corner, but they used to put the names on the back of the shirts. Everybody would get a shirt everybody is free for the day you know like regular class going on and this school that uh this elementary school i went to they were shutting down so they had the fire department come out there and everything and they sprayed us with water we was just having a great time it was like oh to go back mm. so they haven't uh filled day so i was like cool cool him and um april was setting up everything i was like eh okay and, you know, they got shirts made for the different teams. There's, like, the purple team, the green team, the yellow team. But back on him in April, they say they didn't hunch when he took her back to her room to tuck her in. And I was like, that's a lie. Like, I know you lying and you know you lying. Because later on in the episode, you see Fizz go into, like, a lower room. And then you see April walk up to the room and just look look around and then she knock on the door and guess who in the room little teeny tiny fizzle pop yes yeah, she did okay i was like y'all know y'all out here hunching and i guess because the relationship between those two they said it did not work out and um they was trying to work on like they broke up they eventually tried to work on themselves but april mostly says he thought he was not good enough for her and he was but it just didn't work out so they haven't talked in about eight months this first time they've seen or talked to each other in eight months i guess other than social media so i was like cool but y'all still hunching we know y'all hunching you know you hunching the whole world know y'all hunching and you can't tell us no different except for right now because april is um was seen out with Dr. Dre and I was like, go ahead, girl, chase your bag. Girl, do what you want with your body. Uh, I just want you to remember, secure the bag while you at it, okay? Cause child, I don't judge, okay? No judging, no judging. Um, Joy goes over to Trick and Jaden's room to give them shirts cause they both, they all on the green team. And you know, Trick is still sleeping and Joy, and Trick's divorce was like put on hold because at one point they thought that they would figure it out, they would get together, they would try to work it out, and it didn't happen. And her whole thing is because they're not going to work this out and the divorce is eventually going to be final and it's going to happen, she does not want the other kids and Jaden, which is the 19-year-old son, who Joy was around for basically his entire life. She's known him since he was a baby. So I'm pretty sure he was either born right before Trick and Joy got married or during like maybe like the first year or so of them being married. But she was like, basically she Mama Joy. She has been there for him since he was a baby and she doesn't want him to feel like their relationship was basically nothing that they are no longer family 
even though her and Trick are not together. Like, they're not a married couple anymore. So she's having a really hard time because she doesn't want him to feel like just because me and your father didn't work out does not mean that I'm still not here for you. That if you call me, I'm not going to pick up. That I'm not going to ride out if somebody's trying to mess with you. That's her whole thing. And eventually at the end of the episode, well, close to the end of the episode, you know, she pulls him to the side and they talk about it. And he was like, I understand. I see what's going on. And the whole thing is, you still family to me. Like, we're still family. Because uh, Trick and Joy were married for almost 20, like, almost 20 years. He's 19. So, she's really been there since he was a baby. And I'm glad they got it together. Because you you tend to see that when maybe, um, like, step-parents, they break up. And step-parents have been great to the kids. And some of them decide, you know what, because I'm no longer with this person, then I'm no longer in the kids' lives. And that's just messed up. But to have people like Joy who say, you know, just because we didn't work out don't mean we not still family. And that was the whole, like, gist of her thing this episode that no matter what goes on between me and this man, we're still family. And I feel like I've reiterated that for the longest. Moving on. Um, you know, Jock and Scrap go have a conversation or just, like, have a little workout. They go work out and talk. And Scrappy says, he's been fluffy for a minute, so he's trying to get toned. I was like, I'm fluffy now, and I want to get it together, too. And he just talks about the fact that his mom, you know, telling a business was not the zhuzh. But he also talks about how... Him and Bam, like, again, from what he said last episode, they've been fighting like bees and roaches. And he feels like since they've been married, he has been doing everything he's supposed to do as a husband and going above and beyond. And she has yet to reciprocate any of that. And he was like, I feel like I felt before we got married. Like, when we were just dating, like, in the beginning, this is how I felt. And Jock had to let him know. He was like, you can't expect her to be the super wife, the I could do it all being wife, mother, provider, X, Y, Z. You can't expect her to be all that because for most of y'all marriage, I've only been married for three years. She's been pregnant. So y'all have yet to really have that time of I'm the husband, you're the wife. This is everything we're going to do. This is what Y'all have yet to really be living in marital bliss or have that time to just get to know each other as married folk because y'all been, well, she's been pregnant most, like, almost y'all entire marriage. So there was no time to honeymoon and then we're all together and we're doing this, we're doing that. No, because y'all became, well, she fun she finally... She became someone's mother, so now most of her time is spent being a mother. And maybe you got put on the back burner, but at the this point, y'all two grown adults. Y'all have kids. Two kids together. You have another child with Erica. It is time to sit down like an adult and have a conversation with your wife. Because communication is a two-way street. And she needs to sit down and have a conversation with you because really, you see the breakdown of most, like, I've never been married, but... Looking from the outside, looking, from, being on the outside, looking in on some of my like family and some of my friends who decided they was going to get real married real quick, real early. Just looking at like their marriages and where some of them tend to break down or where some of them like are successful is because they have communications, open and honest communication. And there's nothing you cannot come to that person with. And that's for the successful ones and the ones who tend to fail. They don't talk. They don't communicate. There's no communication there. Like everything else is great, but communication sucks. So y'all need to communicate because she can't be the super wife if she's also being super mom and has also been pregnant for most of y'all marriage. So there hasn't been like a long period of time to where she's shown you that Bambi as a girlfriend versus Bambi as the wife are two completely different people there was no time for y'all to say this is what we are as a married couple because y'all became parents real quick and y'all kids are like don't y'all got two under one 
two under two, like, that would be a lot. Um, moving on. Mama D, uh, is talking to Miss Judy at the pool, and she calls a hiatus a hyenas, and I'm like, you mean a hiatus? And the producer's like, you mean a hiatus? She was like, okay, maybe I was drunk when I was saying hiatus. She was like, she wants to take a hiatus slash hyenas from drinking, and she talks to Miss Judy about, you know, the breakdown that happened at the Pajama Jam party, and her thing is Bambi and Scrap, no matter what it seems like to them, she wants them to succeed. She wants their marriage to be successful. But her being on the outside looking in and then have some insider information, y'all don't communicate. And y'all also like to pretend that everything is great when it's not. Just like y'all want to pretend like what happened last night did not happen. Like, y'all pretend like the problems in y'all marriage is not happening, which is another problem. So, Mama D want them to be successful, and she didn't call somebody to show up. And I'm like, okay, because she said she want to do her duty to her son and her daughter-in-law to help them confront the issues. That way, they can move on and be grown adults. I was like, cool. Now, Miss Judy, her issue is... When Mendeecees went to prison, she felt like Yandy basically cut her out of everybody's lives. Like Yandy wasn't calling her to uh, hang out, to be with the kids, to do family stuff. So she felt like when he went away, Yandy basically just snatched the family from, from up under her. And because he's now back, she wants to make up for that lost time with her son. But her son also really has an obligation to make up that lost time with his family, his wife and his kids. So y'all got to figure this out because he's a married man. He has his own family and you being his mama, like I get it. You want to spend time with your son, but his kids need him more than you need him right now. And I'm just telling you that now his kids need him more than you need him right now. He going to get it together with you, but first he has to get it together with his kids. And then he has to get it together with his wife. You always going to be his mama and you're always going to be there for him in the sense of supporting him. But he... Like, these are the formative years for all them kids. And the fact that he was gone so long, that puts a damper on their relationship. And I can say from experience that my father went to prison and we talked maybe out of his whole entire sentence. We maybe talked like maybe 10 times. And then when he got out of prison, it was just like, I'm a teenager now and... At this point, you've missed a lot of years, and I don't know what, what this relationship is. And we tried, and a relationship up until he passed away was not great. And that's one of the things that I always regret, that maybe as a child, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Or maybe at the fact that I was a child, you're the parent, and you didn't do what you were supposed to do in a sense of, we need to get this together, but... These are his kids formative years and he can't just be, okay, I'm with my mom all the time. I got to be with my wife and my kids. So, you know, that's that. Moving on. Um, Fizz say, again, that being around April is kind of weird because, you know, they broke up. But you know what? We don't care because we know y'all hunching. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the teams get together for the field day. Now on the yellow team, you have Sierra, Scrap, Bambi, Mama D, Carly, and Jasmine. I feel like that's who was on the yellow team. I can't be so sure. Oh yeah, and Erica Dixon. Because she's going to come in later. And then on the green team, you have Trick, you have Jaden, you have Amani, and you have Jock joy and trina and then on purple team which i called them the blue team at first but then they said purple i was like okay you have ray j april miss judy um teeny tiny fizzle poplini um yandy mendeces and paris and i'm like why is paris Harris? i keep forgetting that 
did I say Ray J? Because he on the purple team too. But I was like, why is Paris here? I keep forgetting that she's here. And I was like, well then. Um, Bambi says she gonna keep smiling and grinning like nothing's happened because she don't want to put a damper on the mood. And I was like, see this thing that Mama D talked about. She was like, instead of y'all, maybe not at this moment confronting y'all issues, but her thing is instead of y'all confronting the issues that y'all have and actually talking it out with the people that y'all have the issues with, y'all hold on to stuff. Y'all try to put on this face of like, everything's fine, everything's cool, nothing's happening. And then eventually it grows to... I don't want to be around these people. I don't want to talk to you. I don't need to have a conversation with you. Like what's going to happen later. So I was like, yeah, Mama D, right. Y'all really don't be confronting nothing. I mean, not in this moment, but y'all could have talked before. Um. So you know what? I would say Mama D is right. Let me put my arm back. I don't really like my arms like that. Um. So, like I said, you get a lot of scene with April and Bambi talking about the fact that what I mentioned earlier, that Fizz felt like, or what April thinks that Fizz felt like after going to therapy and all that stuff, that he was not good enough for her. And she felt like he was good enough for her. But you know what? They just didn't work out. I was like, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I'm gonna let y'all have it. Now, the events are the potato sack race, um three-legged race tug of war and then i noticed that they got the water guns out there so you know there's that they you know they having fun they being big adult kids and they're just having a good time that's what a field day is for you're having a good time and the purple team won even though we all believe they was cheating and trick takes mendices to the side and they just talk about the fact that when he was in prison he saw a lot of young kids, but a lot of young black men that have a whole bunch of time put on them. Like, they're doing a long bid, and it's just like, when you're getting out to this world, when you're released from prison, you're thought to be a repeat offender, so you're probably going to go back. And that's not what they want to see happen. And Trick say, I've been through it at 16. It's a little different than you being just a little, like, you being older and going in. But... I'm going to be here for you as much as I can. And I'm going to let everybody know down south that you cool and you my people. And we're going to make sure that we help keep these kids out of prison. I was like, cool, cool, cool. Then he was talking about April and how she a little snacky that he want to nibble on right quick. And she need a man like him in her life. And I was like, Mr. Trick, Daddy Dallas. April like man with a certain amount of money. I was surprised she was with little teeny tiny fizzle poplini but then again i knew that was get back at her baby daddy you know her type sir she like she like men with a little more coinage okay but we gonna move on now fizz said the green team's cheating so automatically the purple team won and that the fix like everybody think the fix is in carly and jasmine show up late as ever with a megaphone talk about the champ is here the champ is here i said girl the only people that i know who were able to pull off screaming the champ is here when they walked up into anything was the original person who said it and i forgot who that was in that minute and john cena but you know you can't see him so there's that and then the eagle drop the eagle pops up and the eagle is erica dixon and i was like oh look at all this melanin just ooh, dripping she came through she had a nice little wig on the edges were not crunchy no nothing very beautiful i think she just like fresh face no makeup and i was like beautiful woman and she comes and you know bambi see her scrap see her and it's just like what is she doing here i was like she here dude she family okay she started out with the love of hip hop Atlanta. Okay, she's bridging. Okay, she's the bridge. And uh, baby, can her feel just a little bit, just a little bit. And she's like, she wants to give off grown woman vibes, so there won't be any issues. So she eventually pulls Eric to the side, and basically wants bygones to be bygones, wants them to be actual grown women, be able to talk. And Erica's like, I'm okay with that. Like, no problems, no issues. Like anything in the past, we gonna let that go. 
and we're gonna try to make it work out so i go back over to the people now fizz in April, like I said, have a sneaky link where April go and knock on his door looking around like she not she don't want to be seen and go up into his room. Um Joy let it be known to Sierra that her and Trick can get back together and she just speaks to Sierra about not wanting a relationship between her and Jaden to falter even though her and Trick not getting back together. I've mentioned this before and Sierra's big thing is that's what she regrets the most with um, Shooter's son, Rod Jr., that when her and Shooter were going through her things, and because Rod Jr. was basically an adult at that point, she was letting him do him, and she feels bad that he died not knowing how much she cared about him. So she tell Joy, you know, be there for him. Do what you got to do. It don't matter if you and that man don't work out. You and them kids have built a bond, and that's going to last forever. And I was like, yeah do that and of course like i mentioned her and Jaden have a talk and they cool they fine they're great okay they cool black people they gonna keep on living now erica and mama d have a conversation and mama d mentions you know scrappy and bambi's relationship and erica was like i don't care about that what i care about is building a better co-parenting relationship with scrappy because there's so much hurt on each side every both of them have done so much to each other to this point that they can't even like well she can look at him but he won't even look at her in the face and they co-parent through text and here's the problem first of all that's hurting your child because that's just putting out there that you know what i don't have to really talk to nobody we can just talk through text and that be it y'all are also going to eventually have to make her choose between the two of y'all and that's not something you want especially because she's getting older she's 16 and if y'all can't figure it out now by the time she's 18 and she go off to college and she gets grown and eventually she gets married and have her own kids if that's something she wants you don't want to make your child have to choose which parent is going to be there for these big milestones in her life because y'all as two grown adults in the past before she became an adult herself couldn't fix it and couldn't get it together y'all need to work on this y'all need to fix that if y'all got to go to therapy together do it because at this point even with the hurt on both sides y'all have a child in common even you even though you think that oh she's 16 she'll be 18 and we don't have to deal with this no more you're going to be in each other's lives forever okay i don't know why people think that oh 18 years that's it no forever forever ever ever okay ever that just that's just how it is y'all together forever as long as that child is on this planet y'all are bound together forever not a couple not nothing y'all are bound by a child and that child would become an adult but y'all still bound by that child especially if that child grows up and decides that they're gonna get married they're gonna have their own kids then you're bounded by other family members so get it together work it out because we sick of this okay at some point you have to let it go and just like hearing mama d and erica talk about it scrap is a petty betty and don't like to let nothing go i feel like somebody maybe punched him in the neck when he was a kid and he still don't talk to them to this day okay he can't let that go and bambi tells him she wants him to talk to erica too like y'all need to work this out i was like see bambi we finally agree on something because child your ass is in atlanta you piss me off but we're agreeing on something y'all need to talk hello so that night they tired from the field day they having like a little little hookah lounge night and you know the kids Jaden, um jasmine and imani they talk about their parents like jasmine's whole thing is carly is more of a sister like an older sister to her than she is a mother because she was raised by her grandmother and i was like i know a lot of people with those relationships and i feel like with carly just trying to exert her um I wouldn't say power, just trying to exert the fact. I don't even know if this. I'm going to say exert her power as a mother more. Telling uh, Jasmine what she can and can't wear. Or 
don't be hanging out with this person because at some point during this night, Ray J and Jasmine go talk in somebody's room and Jasmine's like, oh shit, we still have, we're still mic'd up. And, um, Carly go, kind of not yoke her up, but she brings her out the room and tells her, keep your ass out here. And Jasmine's whole thing is she like older men and in the confessional, Carly's like, that's not cute. And I was like, here's the thing. You keep telling her this, but you weren't much of a parent when she needed parenting. And now that she's an adult, while she still needs you around, it's just going to be a lot harder for her to receive that. Now, Jaden say him and his daddy the best as friends. Like, I feel like when he was growing up, Trick was around more. So, they have a better relationship than most. And then, Amani says, you know, him and his dad, like, Jock is the fun parent. They've always had fun together. And the only problem he found was... During his formative years, Jock used to tour a lot, so that put a damper on their whole situation. But it's good to see and hear from the kids, and I feel like they should be on growing up hip hop and not the growing up hip hop that we have because that is some straight trash. Now, to the fuckery and bullshit of all. Erica come up to the hookah night and she asked Scrab to have a conversation. And they, you know, it seemed like he not going to have the conversation. It seemed like he not going to walk over there with her to have a conversation. And eventually he does. Oh, wait, but it's not a conversation. He don't want to have a conversation. Again, he's a petty betty, won't let nothing go, won't have a conversation. And he kind of goes off on production talking about, I don't want to talk about her. I don't want to talk about her. Why don't y'all get the person she dealing with to come up here and talk about her? I'd rather talk about my wife. It's not about y'all being a couple. It is about y'all as two parents figuring out how to really co-parent healthy y'all talking through text that's not healthy co-parenting and that's showing y'all daughter that mm, i don't really have to communicate with nobody like that this is hurting her more than it's helping her and i'm not understanding why at some point maybe y'all need to go to therapy together or maybe y'all need to go to therapy separate and then come together but you're going to have to have a conversation with her i just went off about this he don't want to have a conversation he walk off all huffing and puffing and pissed off or how I perceive and Erica's whole thing is if we can't get it together now then there's no point in trying to work it out in the future and I'm like you hurting your future you hurting your future self you hurting your future uh Imani's future self because this is going to have to make her choose which parent she wants around for stuff because y'all well you can't be in the same room as Erica what the hell is this fix this get it together because we sick of seeing it okay we sick of seeing it on social media we sick of seeing it on our tv screens sick of it sick of it and then he go in his room and you, you can't really hear nothing and it's like the audio is kind of muffled and you see him kind of like look out with a little scowl on his face and i'm like what the hell is going on but that was like the gist of this episode, um, Carly wants to be more of a mother to her grown adult. And I'm like, that's going to be hard because she's grown. Scrap don't want to have a conversation with Erica. And I'm like, y'all going to have to have a conversation eventually because y'all co-parenting relationship sucks. And Mama D want them, uh, all of them to figure it out. But mostly Bambi and Scrap need to stop pretending like things don't happen and then sweeping it under the rug and letting it fester. Because eventually it turns into the situation that we are now. Scrap don't want to be in a room and can't really look at Erica in the face without getting his feelings and walking off. And that's basically all this episode. I just wish people would figure out how to properly communicate their feelings and have open and honest communication. Because it's not really helping anything. It's really hurting you in the long run. And you know what? That was my recap, my review, my thoughts, my feelings. Now... Like, comment, and subscribe, okay? I'm trying to build this channel. And if you're new, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're not new, if you have yet to subscribe, please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, if you are not new and you're already subscribed to me, please like and comment. And I'll see y'all next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>